So I wanna give you a summary in about 10 minutes of a podcast that I'm gonna release that's over an hour and a half long. And honestly, even that one and a half hour podcast itself is a summary, could have been much, much longer. But I wanna answer the question, should Christians celebrate Christmas? Now, I realize this is my own opinion. It's based on what I understand historically and biblically. But some of the main objections that are raised against Christians celebrating Christmas are that Christmas itself is a pagan holiday, or that its origins are pagan holidays, or that it's replacing pagan holidays. And then there's the question of why do we celebrate Christmas on December 25th instead of the date that Jesus was actually born? Because most people agree that December 25th is probably not the historically accurate date of the birth of Christ. Then there's the question of the various components of our Christmas holiday celebration, like where did the idea of Christmas trees and laurel and lights and gift giving come from? Where did Santa Claus come from? Where did Christmas trees come from? What about mistletoe and holly and poinsettias? What about the way that Christmas has been commercialized? And what about the scripture in Jeremiah that tells us not to bring trees into our home and decorate them? Now again, keep in mind that I'm summarizing this in just a few minutes, so I'm not gonna have time to elaborate on any of these points, but I'm going to state them plainly. And then if you wanna hear my more thorough explanation with sources and so on, you can listen to the podcast when it comes out in just a few days. Okay, so the first question is, is Christmas a pagan holiday? The answer to this question is very simply no. Christmas was never a pagan holiday. Now the church started celebrating the birth of Christ on December 25th, sometime between the middle of the third and the early part of the fourth century. This coincides with the time period when Constantine became a Christian and the persecution of the church in the Roman Empire came to an end. Now you might say, well, maybe Christmas itself wasn't a pagan holiday, but it was started to replace pagan holidays, right? Well, a lot of people assume this, but there's actually no evidence for it in any of the surviving writings of the early church. Yeah, it's true that there were several pagan Roman holidays that happened in midwinter, like Saturnalia and Sol Invictus, the birth of Mithras and Calends, but you have to keep in mind that December 25th according to the Julian calendar, which is what the Romans were using at that time, was the time of the December solstice, which is the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is one of the most significant cyclical astronomical events of the year. Plus, December is the dead of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So that means it's a time that's characterized by short, cold, dark days. So it's not exactly a mystery why people would choose this time of year to hold many different kinds of celebrations, feasts, parties, all that kind of stuff was happening all over the world, not only in the Roman Empire, but actually probably throughout every culture and every society on the planet, at least the ones that paid any attention to astronomy. Well, you might ask, if Christmas isn't intended to replace a pagan holiday, then why do we celebrate it on December 25th instead of the day that Jesus was actually born? Well, first of all, I did not say that Christmas was not intended to replace pagan holiday. It's possible that this was at least one of the reasons for it. What I said is there's no actual evidence for that claim in any of the surviving writings of the early church. And it's true that there were pagan holidays celebrating during this time of year. So it's absolutely possible that at least one of the reasons for celebrating Christmas on December 25th was to replace one or more of the pagan holidays. However, we don't know that for sure. So anybody who claims to know this is just wrong. It's not a fact, it's at best an assumption. But what other reasons could there possibly be to celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th if it's not pagan holidays? Well, it's important to point out that we actually don't know for sure when Jesus was born. The Bible doesn't tell us. In any case, I would argue it's probably true that it's unlikely that Jesus was born in December, and I've heard some good theories about this and, and good theories of when Jesus might have really been born, but I'm not gonna get into that because they really don't matter to this discussion. The discussion we're having is why did the church decide to celebrate Christmas on December 25th? And we actually have some very good, well-documented reasons for this that have absolutely nothing to do with paganism. For example, for a while it had been theorized that Jesus was actually born on March 25th. Why? Because this was accepted as the date of creation. And the people thought of it like this. Well, it, it made sense that Jesus, who is the light of the world, came into the world on the same day that God said, let there be light. But then there was this guy, Sextus Julius Africanus. He said, wait a minute. Technically, Jesus didn't come into the world when he was born. He came into the world when he was conceived. That's a good pro-life argument, isn't it? So actually, that means that he wasn't born until nine months later. And what's nine months from March 25th? 
December 25th. And remember that December 25th on the Julian calendar was the time of the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, which was sometimes celebrated in the ancient world as the day of the unconquered sun. Why? Well, because the days have been getting shorter and shorter and darker and darker since June. And for six months, the sun had been getting lower and lower on the horizon. But then winter solstice is the day that changes again. The sun begins to rise again on the horizon. And Jesus being born on that day of the unconquered rising sun, that probably seemed like a fitting and appropriate time. And maybe they even thought of it as a confirmation that this was indeed the day. Okay, so Christmas is not a pagan holiday. It may or may not have been intended to replace pagan holidays. We just don't know for sure. And there are many other good reasons that the church might have chosen December 25th as the day of Christ's birth that have nothing to do with paganism. And these non-pagan reasons are the actual reasons, the only actual reasons that we have any evidence for in the writings of the early church. Well, you might say, at least we can agree that our Christmas traditions were influenced by pagan holidays, right? Well, that's not straightforward either. In fact, let's, let's just have a look at some of them. I'll save the big two uh, examples, Santa Claus and the Christmas tree for the end. But let's talk about laurel and holly and mistletoe and poinsettias. Yes, it's true, laurel and holly and mistletoe were all used as decorations in many different winter celebrations, not only throughout the Roman Empire, but in other parts of the world as well. That's not because these are inherently demonic plants or something. That's because certain species of these plants grow in the winter. In fact, laurel can bloom with flowers in the winter. Holly can bear red berries in the winter. So in any region where everything else had died and there was nothing but bland and colorless landscape, these plants that were green and colorful were obvious choices for being used as winter decorations. Remember, people in the ancient world didn't have Hobby Lobby. They couldn't just go to Walmart or Target and buy decorations. Most people were also very poor. So even if there was a shop selling decorations, most people couldn't afford them. So what would they do? They'd use stuff growing in nature, stuff that was around them. And in winter, laurel, holly, and mistletoe were some of the obvious options. And by the way, when the church borrowed these popular common decorations, they often Christianized them. For example, they used holly to represent the crown of thorns. Why? Because it was prickly and it had berries that kind of looked like drops of blood. Poinsettias aren't even worth talking about. As far as I know, there's no connection to any pagan celebrations whatsoever. I think they actually come from Mexico or something. Now, this is really important uh, to make this point at this stage. There is a huge distance historically between our modern celebration of Christmas and what was celebrated in the early centuries of the church. Now, there were things they may or may not have borrowed from various pagan holidays for various reasons. Many of those reasons have been lost to us today. And even when they did borrow them, they usually Christianized them, like I said. But what you have to understand is that our modern Christmas has virtually nothing in common with the Christmas that was celebrated in the early church, let alone in the pagan world. I mean, honestly, it's almost misleading to even call these holidays by the same name. And in fact, in ancient times, it wasn't the same name. Christmas wasn't always called Christmas. The way that Christ's birth was celebrated through most of the Middle Ages actually evolved quite dramatically from time to time and place to place. And then it went through a huge revolution during the time of the Reformation, and then the Protestant Germans developed their own celebration based on adaptations from German Catholics. And then the English had their own version of Christmas that evolved into basically a rowdy carnival. And when all of these different European traditions got uh, mixed up in the United States, the big melting pot, they evolved even further in the 19th and 20th centuries, influenced by lots of different authors and companies until Christmas became what it is today. Now, I lay all of this out very thoroughly in my podcast called Should Christians Celebrate Christmas? But what you've got to grasp is that, again, our Christmas is a very recent invention. It has almost nothing in common with ancient Christian celebrations, much less being an even older pre-Christian pagan holiday. Well, what about Santa Claus, you might ask? Where did he come from? Well, you're probably aware that the story of Santa Claus has its roots in a legend of a Christian bishop named Nicholas that was born in modern-day Turkey in the fourth century. He was known for his generosity and his charity, and after he died, he was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church as Saint Nicholas. He died on December 6th, so that became his feast day in the church, and it became a day when gifts would be given in his honor. And that tradition of giving gifts and stockings and, and other ways apparently comes from the tradition where kids would leave their shoes outside on the eve of St. Nick's feast day, and in the morning, they would have candy in them. Now, after the Reformation, in the Protestant parts of Europe, St. Nick was replaced by a less Catholic-sounding person. In England, 
he was called Father Christmas. In the Netherlands, he was known as Sinterklaas, who was a hefty man with a white beard who carried a naughty and nice list and so on. In Germany, where the Reformation started, Martin Luther wanted to take people's attention away from the Catholic saints and put their eyes on Jesus, so he actually moved the night of gift giving from December 5th to Christmas Eve, where Saint Nick was replaced by the Christ child, which the German word for that is Christkindl. And so when all of these traditions came to America, again, they all got mixed together. The English Christ's mass became Christmas. The German Christkindl became Kris Kringle, and the Dutch Santa Claus became Santa Claus. By the way, even at that point, when all of these things were coming to America, that was still a far cry from the Santa we know today. Our Santa borrows from some of these older tra traditions, but it was really created by the Americans. There was a poet by the name of Clement Clark Moore who described Santa in a famous poem called The Night Before Christmas. And then Thomas Nast, who was an artist, took some of Moore's descriptions, he added a few new elements, and he drew Santa in Harper's Weekly Magazine. And then finally, Santa took on his modern form during the Great Depression when the Coca-Cola Bottling Company decided to use Santa to boost winter sales in 1931. Now, is it possible that somewhere through the long and storied evolution of the Santa Claus legend, that something from some ancient non-Christian mythological or even pagan tradition crept into the Saint Nick mythology? Of course, that's possible. If you don't understand that, you just don't understand how mythology works. But that doesn't make Santa some demonic or pagan figure. Santa today is far more modern and American than he is ancient or Greek or Roman or Nor Norse or pagan. So let's talk very quickly about the other big one, which is Christmas trees. Aren't they a pagan tradition? Well, this might be the most shocking one of all. The answer is that actually, no, they're not. Now, I'm not saying that no one has ever incorporated trees in general or evergreen trees in specific to pagan or animistic worship. That's certainly happened and probably still happens in some places today. What I am saying is that our Christmas tree has a very different origin, one you probably have never even heard of. In the medieval times, there was a celebration that took place on December 24th called Adam and Eve Day. And Martin Luther really liked the plays that would happen on this day. They had this thing in the play, uh, which was called a paradise tree, which helped to tell the story of Adam and Eve. And this was to set the stage for the story of the birth of Christ. And these plays, again, they featured what was called a paradise tree. And as early as the late 14th century, people started to set up these paradise trees indoors. People would decorate them with apples to represent the Garden of Eden and wafers to represent the Eucharist. And the paradise tree is where we get the Christmas tree. They basically come to us from Lutheran Protestants. But just like it is with Santa Claus, they only really caught on in the early 20th century. So again, they're not some ancient pagan tradition. They're not. They're a relatively new idea that is a current tradition, and what we celebrate today is extremely modern. Now, there is a scripture that a lot of people like to use, a scripture from Jeremiah that they, they believe says that Christmas trees are wrong. Let me read this to you. It says in Jeremiah 10, 2 through 4, Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the people are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and the craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so it will not totter. Now, that sounds a lot like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? Well, maybe, if you don't think about it for more than like two seconds. Obviously, this is not literally referring to Christmas trees because this is the Old Testament. This was written before Jesus was even born. So there's no Christmas time happening at this time in history. But some people read this verse and they notice how much the description seems to remind them of a Christmas tree. So they make the assumption that the tradition of bringing an evergreen tree indoors and decorating it and putting presents on it or whatever was a tradition that had been adopted from the pagans of earlier times and then applied to Christmas later on. That's not what this verse is saying. Look again. It says that the practice of the people is to cut a tree out of the forest. And then look, the craftsman shapes it with his chisel, and they adorn it with silver and gold. What is that describing? Not a Christmas tree. It's talking about a wood carving. They use a chisel. More specifically, it's talking about the carving of an idol. Look at the next verse. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. And then look at verse eight. They are all senseless and foolish. They are taught by worthless wooden idols. Hammered silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz. 
What the craftsmen and the goldsmiths have made is then dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal king. When he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Tell them this, these gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth under the heavens. Okay, so again, Christmas trees are not an ancient pagan tradition. They are actually a quite modern Christian, mostly Protestant tradition. And Jeremiah was not talking about Christmas trees in that verse. He was talking about idols and idolatry. And if you're worried about idolatry, stop picking on the easy stuff like Christmas trees. That's not what idolatry looks like in the modern world. It looks more like the smartphone you're watching this on right now. Okay, so now in that longer podcast, I dive a lot further into all of this stuff. And I also address the philosophical questions like, even if, for the sake of argument, if Christmas was nothing but a replacement for pagan festivals, would that make it wrong? And a question like that applies to other topics as well, like should we substitute things like harvest festivals or trunk or treat parties and other similar things for Halloween? And I don't just give my opinion. We dive into the history. We dive into the scriptures. I mean, we go down the rabbit hole here, so make sure to watch the full podcast if this subject interests you. Like this, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And by the way, Merry Christmas.